All right, again, good morning to everyone and those uh, if you're looking in on this uh, broadcast at all. It's a wonderful thing. We just want to thank you for that, for paying attention here. We're going to do something a little different this morning. Um, <clears throat> I was working on something this week in my head for a while there, and it just didn't pan out. Not my head, but the message <laughs> didn't pan out. Uh, so we're going to do a rerun. You like reruns, don't you? You watch, you watch reruns on television, don't you? Uh, my wife and I, we watch them, we go over some of them, because we forget what it was, and it's something new to us, so. How many can relate to that? Mm. Oh yeah, a few, look at that, okay. So we're going to do a rerun, but this was, uh, one, uh, you've never heard this one before. Last time I did this message was uh, February 21, 1999, in an AM service, so that's going back a few years. Now, uh, that was back when I used to write uh, messages out, so, um, I might have some trouble because I can hardly understand my own writing here and stuff, so <laughs> we're gonna just, we'll just work through it. But uh, beyond that, you can turn in your Bibles to <clears throat> excuse me, Psalms 139. We'll read a couple of verses, and then we're going to take one of these verses and a bit of that verse and use that as our topic for today, but we're going to have a word of prayer first. Psalm 139. Let's pray first of all. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you now, Lord, that we can look into the Word of God, your, your Word, Lord. We pray you'll help us with this uh, topic today, this doctrine we're going to look at, Lord, this teaching, and give us a good understanding and help us with it, Lord. And we pray that uh, you'll be glorified, and Lord, we just pray that we'd be helped and comforted even. We just thank you now and thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. All right, in 139... Uh, uh, just follow as I read uh, the first 12 verses here in Psalm 139. O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my, compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. <clears throat> Excuse me. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto, unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. Behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the, light, but the night shineth as, as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. I want to draw your attention to verse 7 and the second part of it, where it says, Whither shall I flee from thy presence? And that's going to be our topic this morning that we're going to have a look at, <clears throat> excuse me, whither shall I flee from thy presence? So in our introduction here, a question we need to ask, uh, or maybe it's just a statement, just to something to, just to put out there. What is it that can bring uh, manifold peace and joy to the Christian, and at the same time, that same thing can bring an untold fear and dread and conviction to the sinner? Well, God himself. The very presence of God, okay? The very presence of God. The, the Lord said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 15, I am thy exceeding great reward. This, the very presence of God is a reward. We want to consider the implications, the blessings, the benefits from the doctrine of the presence of God with us. The doctrine just simply means the teaching. And it is a big teaching in the Bible, as we see in this portion here, about God being with us. We're going to look at some of the things that have to do with that and some uh, implications and so on and so forth. Um, have you stopped to consider lately your relationship with God, with the Lord, whether you're saved or not, or whether you're serving or not? Have you stopped to consider your physical proximity to him? Where is he? Is he a God that is afar off? 
He says, no, I'm not a God that is afar off. He's close by, isn't he? Jeremiah chapter 23, the Lord says, Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? We want to look at the fact of his presence. God is omnipresent. Now that word omni means in all ways, in all directions, in all. Okay? He's everywhere present. That's something that we can't really fathom and really grab hold of. Um, it's hard to grasp uh, the uh, uh, eternality of God and the infiniteness of himself. Uh, he's everywhere present. In, and we just mentioned that in Psalm 139, verse 7, B, where shall I flee from thy presence? We want to consider the indwelling of the Spirit of God, first of all. The indwelling of the Spirit of God. In Ephesians chapter 1, in verse uh, 13, it says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, indwelt with God for all time. Okay? A sealing to them that believe. Okay? And we see that God's uh, presence brings a comfort as well. In John chapter 14, verse 18, Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. In Romans 8 and 9, you can see that... Uh, uh, the Spirit of God is called the Spirit of Christ as well. In Hebrews, he says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. In John 16, verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that, that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. God's desire, God's desire is to be present present with his people and for us to know that God's desire is for us to experience his presence mm -hmm. to experience and know his presence Joshua 1 9 says that not I commanded thee be strong and have a good courage be not afraid neither be thou dismayed for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest God's presence gives strength, courage, no fear. And that word dismayed there means to stop. It means to stop your forward motion. But God's presence there helps us with all those things. The fact of his presence, God's strength, and, and, and gives a, God, God's presence gives us strength and gives us courage. It expels fear and dismay. God's presence strengthens us. Do you need comfort? From time to time we need comfort. We need strength. We need all these things. And we find it in the Lord. We need to consider His presence this very moment. I mean, He's here, isn't He? Mm -hmm. He's in the room. He's in the Christian. He's everywhere present. You can never, ever be away from Him. You ever think of that? some purposes and some benefits. How can a consideration of his presence benefit us? Well, first of all, for the Christian, belief and trust. When we uh, understand and believe the word of God, we see and understand that he dwells within us. There's a trust built. He said he would never leave. God cannot lie. He's never going to leave us. Never, ever going to leave us. Do you believe that? Do you believe God's word? When was there a moment that he was not near you, not present, not in you, not through you, and not all around you? Was there ever a moment, even before we were saved, he was there? He was there. He's always there. You can't get away from God. If we would consider and meditate upon the fact of his presence, it benefits belief and it bolsters faith. Just to think about God and his nearness to us and that he wants to be near to us. He wants us to acknowledge this and understand and experience the nearness of God, the presence of God. For those who are not Christians, for those who are not born again, they have not yet trusted in Jesus Christ as Savior, 
have not repented of their sins nor trusted in Christ, those who are not saved, the, pres the presence of God is to your benefit as well. For Jesus Christ came to seek and to save that which was lost. You are lost in your sins. Even though you may not realize it, you are headed for hell. Your soul is in danger of the flames. You could perish. You could leave this world any moment. Any one of us. And you would be forever lost. The Spirit of God is seeking you. Trying to draw you to Himself. Bidding you to turn from your sins. And turn to Jesus Christ and be saved. So the presence of God is a great benefit to you in this age, in this time. Also, God's presence can make a great different difference in the Christian's life and the Christian's living. To be aware of Him at all times and to have a sense of His presence, to understand and be in a state of continual consciousness of God's nearness and belief in Him being all around us. This causes us to be much more careful of what we allow in His presence. Mm -hmm. Because He's here, He's in here. Where we go, we take Him. What we see, He sees. What we hear, saying. What we think, we're subjecting God's presence to that as well. The desires of our heart are things we bring into His very presence, whether it's good or bad. Why are Christians sometimes so careless with themselves? Perhaps the reason is simply that they don't realize it or don't believe it, or perhaps don't really care, never thought of that. He is here, He's near, He's indwelling, and He's all around the redeemed. The presence of God also brings a, a meditation on the person of Jesus Christ. To think on Him, to be our life's focus and purpose. As Psalm 1611 says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In Thy presence is fullness of joy. At Thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. The the fullness of joy in His presence, and just to think of the Lord Jesus Christ. Also, the presence of God expels the fear of man. Mm -hmm. We need to consider God with us, near us, within us, always, and forget the frowns of others. We fear man to our detriment. How can we witness if we fear people? No mere need to fear. I like what Willie Mullen said. Uh, one of my, my, probably my favorite preacher. He said, I don't fear your frowns nor covet your smiles. He had, the idea was he had a job to do and he would do it. But the presence of God and the knowing and the knowledge of God and the experience of the presence of God helps us to forget the frowns of others. Or if they intimidate, just leave that to one side. Should they be contrary? doesn't matter. There's a little saying, and that's one man with God is in the majority. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Even in the midst of the brethren, the consideration of the, of the presence of Christ will guide and control the conversation. To forget this is to let down our guards. The presence of God considered and believed it can bring a desire for holy living. It can bring a dealing with sin and putting it away. We think of uh, King David, Psalm 51, verses 10 and 11. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a, renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. The born-again believer cannot say this. We can say it, but it's foolish thing to say. We cannot say, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Why? Because he's there permanently. He will be with you forever and ever. He never leaves. 
People say, some people believe you can lose your salvation. That means the Spirit of God would have to leave you. And that would mean that God would have to be a liar. God is not a liar. If God says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, you can be sure that that's the truth of it. You are sealed with him and by him. Ephesians 1.13 But you can grieve him by sin and disobedience. And then it's like, and then it's like, he, it's like as if he did leave. I think God just kind of sits back and folds his arms and just waits until we come around to that point of uh, understanding that our behavior, our sin, our words, our thoughts, or whatever it is, and sometimes he leaves us alone with our own, uh, our old nature. Maybe to appreciate and understand his presence. But we can grieve him. Many live their lives just how they please, just how they would please. And, and that's true too. We should just uh, go out, just live however you want to live. And that's going to show you what side of the fence you're on though. Many live their lives just, just how they please and give no thought that God is present and God is grieved by our neglect, by our sinful worldliness and actions and words, by the returning to our own vomit. The presence of God and the, the meditation on this will and help cause us to put away sin out of our lives. The presence of God known, believed, and regularly considered will help us in this busy day and hour. Will help us in this busy day and hour to be rightly focused in this busy day. And who isn't busy? It's just like an unnatural busyness. We just don't have time for hardly anything. And I think it was George Mueller that said this, uh, this uh, gave this comment on the barrenness of busyness. And I believe it was Mueller that said this, the so-called work of the Lord is often a substitute for med meditation and quietness in His presence and a study and reflection on His Word. We substitute action for communion with God. We substitute busyness for the blessing of His presence. The believer makes a fatal mistake who for any cause neglects the prayerful study of the Word of God and communion with his ever-present spirit and quietness in his presence. The Lord himself says in, in Psalm 46, Be still and know that I am God. In that same chapter, the very first verse of that chapter 46 in Psalms, God is a very present help in trouble. God is present. He says it so many times. He wants us to understand that, to live in that. Excuse me. We need to consider the, re, uh, uh, the reaction of some saints in Scripture uh, uh, to God's presence. For instance, some that saw Him, some uh, uh, that did see Him or stood in His presence. We think of John in Revelation chapter 1. He says, when I saw Him, I fell at His feet as dead. The presence of God. Mm -hmm. See what it does? Mm -hmm. Ezekiel had that experience. Daniel had that experience. The Apostle Paul on the Damascus Road, that light came down, and the, the voice, he met with the Lord Jesus right there, he fell down before him. Flesh becomes inactive in his presence. Okay? 1 Corinthians 1.29 says that no flesh should glory in his presence. The consideration of God's presence uh, with you has an effect on the flesh. And one of the biggest problems we have in this day and age is just that, is worldliness and the flesh ruling over us. Isaiah said, Woe is me, I am undone, when he was in the presence of God. Look what can happen when the presence of God is forgotten or ignored or neglected. I was going to read a portion to you from Ezekiel here. <clears throat> Excuse me when uh, um, the Lord told Ezekiel to do a particular thing, he said unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, I, uh, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wickedness, the wicked abominations that they do there. 
So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jeazaniah the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in the chambers of his imagery, where they say, The Lord seeth us not, the Lord hath forsaken the earth. The Lord seeth us not, the Lord hath forsaken the earth. This is what happens when the presence of God is forgotten, when the presence of God is ignored, or when the presence of God is neglected. Re, uh, religion continues when God was not in it at all. Okay? Godliness and sin abounds when God is not rightly considered. You don't fear God. And you don't believe that he's close by. <clears throat> you look at our world today. And look at the things going on. It's getting worse and worse and worse. Why? Because it's godless. Because they don't understand and they don't want God to be near them. Read Psalm 2 sometime this week. It talks about it's prophetic for this day. They're trying to cast off the bands of Christianity. Cast off God from, from among them. No fear of God and no thought of God. When God is neglected, just His very presence is neglected and not even, not even uh, uh, regarded. Some saints were required to stand in His presence. Some messengers, a messenger, uh, Gabriel the angel, who stands in the presence of God. Elijah stood at the cave's entrance in the presence of God. Jeremiah was told... And God said to him, If thou return, then I will bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. It's a preferred place. It's the perfect place. It's a powerful place. But I think maybe above all, it's a privileged place. God's presence is a privilege. But some don't want it. Some run from his presence. Adam and Eve ran, didn't they? When they sinned, they ran and hid themselves. They wanted to hide from God. Maybe they feared God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jonah fled from the presence of God. Chapter 1 tells us that. In Luke chapter 4, verse 33 and 34, there was a uh, man in the synagogue where Jesus was teaching, had that devil, and desired Jesus to go away and leave us alone. The people of the land of Gad, the Gadarenes, said, leave our coasts. They desired Jesus, just go away. Get God away from us. Some just don't want God's presence. There may be some here today, some listening today, who do not desire the presence of God in their lives. And you must ask yourself a question. Why are you running? Why do you not desire Christ to be near you or you to be near Him? It's sin that causes that. It's just sin, that's all. Wherever it's found, wherever this is, it's a sin. <clears throat> the sinner's response to Jesus Christ is, go away. I don't need you. But God is seeking people today to bless with forgiveness through faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ's atoning death and resurrection. But you must come into the presence of God, come before Him to receive Christ. Bow yourself, your heart before Him. The good news of the Gospel is that God Himself left, out of, left heaven and took on human form. A perfect man, 100% God in Jesus Christ. He was nailed up on that cross for your sins, for my sins, for the sins of the whole world of all time. He gave his life, shed his blood, and died on that cross and was buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and the Father holds out his hand and says, will you accept him? Will you believe? Will you trust in him? 
Will you receive my son Jesus Christ as your Savior? It's the only payment for your sins. Mm -hmm. It's the only payment. There is no other payment. Not knocking on doors, not going to church, not being baptized, not being a good person. God says, I sent my son to the cross to pay for your sins. And he rose from the dead to show that it's paid for and that sin is dealt with. Will you simply believe in him? Amen. Simply believe. Revelation chapter 3 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the, open the door, I will come in unto him. God's presence, Christ's presence with the individual who believes in Jesus Christ. The presence of Christ today, he says, to seek and to save that which is lost. We have, the believers have Christ Jesus living right inside here, the Spirit of God right there. And one of the main things he wants us to do is go and tell others. He's still in the business of seeking to save that which is lost, but is using you and me in that ministry of reconciliation which he's given to all Christians. That's for today. For the future, for those who refuse his presence today, the future is very dark. Revelation chapter 20, we see the, the, the great white throne judgment where Jesus Christ will sit upon the throne and he will judge every person and everything you've ever done will be brought up. He'll be judged and he'll be cast away from God, away from God's presence forever and ever in the hell of the lake of fire. Psalm 139 verse 7 says, Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence. Who would want to flee from God's presence? What reason would you have for fleeing from God's presence? In the presence of God, in the meditation of His presence, in the, in the consideration of His presence, there is a calming effect. Be still and know that I am God. There's protection. He is my shield and my buckler. There's companionship. You're never alone. There's comfort. The Holy Spirit is called the Comforter. And sin flees from His presence. Self is slain. It simply shows His faithfulness and that as He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. What is it that causes us not to consider God with me? I would rather not to consider it more frequently. Why do we not think on this more often? Sometimes other things are more prevalent in our lives. Sometimes other things are more important in our lives. <clears throat> we need to ask ourselves, what's the number one love of your life? Is there anyone or anything else that takes that place other than Jesus Christ? Just to conclude, to the saved, to those that have trusted in Jesus Christ, will you ask God to give you an unending sense of His presence? Amen. And then these things will be very prominent in your life. Obedience, Bible study, and prayer. These things will be a, a reality in your life always. Will you consider Christ in all places at all times for all things? And the nearness of God to us all. To those that are unsaved, if you've not been saved, if you've not trusted in Jesus Christ, will you stop running from His presence? Will you turn to Jesus Christ and believe the Lord Jesus Christ and He will be saved? Will you repent of your sins? Will you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Sin makes you flee from Him. Sin causes you to flee. You need to turn and run to Him. He's the only one who can deal with your sins. And you know, we all know that we have sins. Have you stopped to consider lately your relationship with Christ and your physical, your physical proximity to Him? How close He really is. God is near you. Consider him, for he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Whither shall I flee from thy presence? Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for this teaching of the 
the scriptures, Lord, is so important for us to think on your presence being around us, near us, and actually right inside, dwelling in our hearts by faith. Lord, we want to thank you for these things. We pray that you'll just uh, help us to remember these things and help us to live and help, help us to speak, help us to think, Lord, with the consideration that you are present. Lord, we will change our lives, we know. But we just thank you for this. Thank you for your word, and we thank you for all things. And we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for your attention, folks. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you next week. Okay? Thank you very much. Bye now. Thank you.